And before I get into this, I want to talk a little bit about patterns for design that predates uh, the use of these patterns in computer science and for user interface development and design. So the original book that that is based on is called A Pattern Language, and this is from the late 70s. It's an architecture guidebook called Pattern Language, Towns, Buildings, and Construction, and this is by Christopher Alexander from 1977. So let me talk to you a little bit about this book and how it works. This was a groundbreaking piece of uh, textbook and architecture, and it's actually um, still a very, very well-selling uh, text. So the book is laid out in the numbers. I mean, you, you'll recognize these numbers from the Tidwell book. It's a similar sort of a layout. But it starts very broadly. So here we have independent regions. Number one, city with country fingers. So it keeps drilling down into the size of communities of 7,000. So groups of communities with the 7,000 people, down to public transportation, uh, the limiting the size of building heights, down to shopping streets, nightlife. And each one of these patterns relies on previous patterns higher up the chain, and also incorporates um, patterns down the chain as well. So for instance, um, well, okay, so let's we start at one, independent regions, and go all the way here to page, well, it's, it's pattern number 253. And this one is called Things From Your Life. Um, things From Your Life, okay, so we started at one, which was regions. Things From Your Life has to do with your own possessions and your own house. Okay, so let's talk about the things in here. I'll show you some of the patterns that have to do with the Tidwell book in a roundabout way. So let me dig down here in deeper into the set of patterns. Here's a pattern, pattern number 120, Paths and Goals. And this is about arranging pathways in communities. So each one of these uh, patterns has a problem. So they've laid out the problem here. They talk about the problem. The layout of the paths will seem right and comfortable only when it is comfortable with the process of walking. And the process of walking is far more subtle than one might imagine. And now throughout the book are little diagrams and squiggles and charts like this that describe series of goals and the actual path. The solution for pattern number 120 is to lay out paths first place goals at natural points of interest, then connect the goals to one another to form the paths. And the path should be straight, maybe straight or gently curved between goals. Their paving should swell around the goal. The goals should never be more than 100 feet apart. And you can see they've got a latticework here of, of uh, paths. Um, and importantly, um, this calls upon previous um, uh, uh, well, I, I should say it calls upon future patterns such as families of entrances, well that's a previous one, 102, main entrances, which is 110, tree places, which is further down, um, spots for seating, raised flowers. So each one of these numbers is a pattern. Um, uh, each pattern comprises pieces from the larger patterns and, and the patterns after as well. So that's interesting. Now you begin to see that there's, there's sort of a parallel here between web navigation and paths and goals in a community. So these metaphors that they're using in architecture uh, and in this guidebook can be applied to computer science. And that's really the point of uh, Tidwell's that she took uh, the same concept, well pre people previous to her actually, took this concept of a patterns and pattern languages and apply them to computer software design and user interface design. So I want to look a little bit further down here at some of the other things that have application to computer science um, and user interface design and web design. So common areas of the heart, uh, pattern 129, no social group, whether a family, a work group, or a school group can survive without constant informal contact among its members. That has specific uh, relevance to Web 2.0. So constant informal contact among its members. This is Facebook. Okay, pattern 
Um, okay, so the solution to that pattern was create a single common area for every social group located at the center of gravity of all places the group occupies and in such a way that the paths which go in and out of the building lie tangent, ta tang lie tangent to it. So you can see here tangent paths coming out, center of gravity of social life, um, so there are paths leading out and going every which way around it. So this is in, in, this is a physical sense for what's happening in Facebook and social networking. Okay, here's another one. By the way, I mean, this was not built at all to be related to computer science and uh, user interface design. Okay, flexible office space. This is pattern 146. It is possible to create a kind of space which is specifically tuned to the needs of working people, of people working, and yet capable of an infinite number of various arrangements and combinations within it. So is it possible to do that? That sounds awfully applicable to what we're doing. And the solution for this, for this problem in this pattern, the solution for this is lay out the office space as wings of open space with freestanding columns around their edges so they define half private and common spaces open to one another. Set down enough columns so that people can fill them in over the years in many different ways, but it's always you know, always in a semi-permanent fashion. So this is really about cubicles. It's not can't really relate it directly to uh, to what we're doing. Okay, the next one is this is I think this is the best one. Structure follows social spaces. No, uh, number two hundred five. No building ever feels right to the people in it unless the physical spaces, which are defined by columns, walls, and ceilings, are congruent with the social spaces defined by activities and human groups. Okay, this is directly applicable to what we do with making web spaces more usable. The solution to this, a geodesic dome, steel and glass, the solution to this uh, specific dilemma, the first principle of construction, on no account allow the engineering to dictate the building's form. Well, that sounds familiar. Place the load-bearing elements, the columns, and the walls according to the social spaces of the building. Never modify the social spaces to conform to the engineering structure of the building. That's great. That's great. What's the next one here? I pulled out ones that I thought were, were more applicable to um, what we were doing. Let me just pause a sec here. Okay, let me uh, draw an analogy here to, I think, something that's very, very important to what we're doing. Uh, in this pattern language book from late 1970s, uh, a series of guidelines for architecture and for uh, public spaces and for um, city planning. This is a very interesting concept. The concept 208 pattern, gradual stiffening. Okay, so this was built, this was... Um, put together specifically uh, to describe how to build things, but it applies to web usability. So what I'm going to do here is read this pattern and remove the word building and replace it with website. Okay, so listen to this. The fundamental philosophy behind the use of pattern languages is that websites should be uniquely adapted to individual needs and sites, and that the plans of websites should be rather loose and fluid in order to accommodate these subtleties. So that's a key proponent and the grandparent of our philosophy um, of uh, rapid prototyping and paper prototyping, the reason for using paper, pr paper prototyping. Okay, so that's the problem. What's the solution that this pattern offers is go. recognize that you are not assembling a website from components like an erector set but the, you are instead weaving a structure which starts out globally complete. So the entire thing's all, all pretty much understood and, and set, but flimsy. So starts out globally complete, but flimsy, then gradually make it stiffer, but still rather flimsy, and only finally making it completely stiff and strong. Um, we believe that our, in our own time, the most natural version of this process is to put up a shell or sheet of materials and then make it fully strong by filling it in with compressive fill. That, that's technical uh, language for building materials. But the point here, if you could take an analogy from this gradual stiffening um, 
1977 pattern languages about architecture, and the basis for all pattern languages, this structure of numbering and uh, nesting patterns. Um, the analogy we can take from this specific passage is talking about you, know, you don't start with concrete. You don't start with steel beams. You start with flimsy stuff. You fill it in. You work with from a socially um, uh, adaptable and, and uh, socially focused framework. Start with flimsy materials and see how people use the stuff and then gradually stiffen and strengthen to meet the needs of the community. That's kind of the thesis of the whole course. So I was really happy to find this. I hadn't seen this before uh, taking a look at this book.